Hi folks, and welcome to the Salty Seaman. Today we're going to talk about the top eight urban legends within the military. Now this is a little different from the top ten myths I did about a year ago, although there's some crossover, which I'll touch on briefly. That list was more about some stuff that's inside the military, some stuff that is uh, has seen by civilians. This one's purely inside the military and some of the various little urban legends which may or may not be true to, depending on where the story came from, how many times it's been retold and whatnot. Uh, first of all, let's get a couple we've already covered right out of the way. Number eight, salt Peter and the food at boot camp. Again, already went over this one. It's completely not true, but it's one of those dogged rumors that's always going to happen in boot camp. You know, a bunch of guys don't seem to get a fucking hard on for a couple weeks and they blame some magical ingredient in their food. Not true. You're purely not getting hard on because you're just full of stress and you're tired and you're not getting enough sleep. Now that brings us into number seven, another one we covered on the other video, stress cards in boot camp. Speaking of stress, now this is one uh, just it will not go away no matter how many people uh, you know can show evidence that these things never existed. Persistent rumor because there's just enough people that come out and say, well I got one or my recruit, I was a recruit training commander or drill sergeant and I gave them out and no you didn't, it's fucking bullshit. It's one of those things that never existed. There's a slight bit of truth to the fact that there were cards handed out, you know, who to contact, you know, Kate, the chaplain or whatever, but there was no, at no time was any card ever used in any boot camp where you could hold it above your head and say, hey, I'm too stressed out, I need a timeout. This never fucking existed, but it is one of the most prevalent rumors of the military. It happens with every new generation, even though the last generation knows it didn't happen. It blows my mind, but again, never happened, so let's drop it. It won't. Number six, here's one that's stopped me if you've heard this one before or a version of this. Uh, the Section 8 guys, the guy that got out on, a, uh, on being crazy. The first version I ever heard of this was the guy that was bouncing an invisible basketball everywhere he went. Anytime he was asked what he was doing, he says he was bouncing his basketball. And, you know, he eventually gets turned over to a psyche eval, and he continues to insist he has this invisible basketball with him at all times. And eventually the military uh, lets him go on, uh, you know, basically a Section 8, as they would have called it back in the day, or just, you know, he's out on, on a medical... And the minute he leaves the quarter deck or wherever, the, the line of base, he stops bouncing the basketball, picks it up, and throws it aside and says, I don't need that anymore because now he's free and clear. I've heard versions of this with a skateboard. I've heard versions of this with an invisible motorcycle. And I'm sure there's many, many, many versions of this tale. Uh, is there any truth to this? I, I don't think so. There may have been... But the fact is, this, ver this story has been told and retold, and the object always changes. And I've heard it from Marines. I've heard it many times in the Navy. And it's the same basic story and, you know, uh, punchline. Whether or not any version has ever happened, who knows? But the version you heard probably isn't true. Number five, charms. Uh, the dreaded uh, bad luck non-charm of our service members uh, infantry, Army, and Marines on the front line. When you get an MRE, used to be, maybe they're still in there, I doubt at this point because I got such a bad rap. Uh, your dessert, various stuff, Skittles, what have you. There was a uh, type of candy called a charm, which was considered a bad luck charm. Anyone who ate them, opened them, did whatever, something bad would happen to their unit out in the field. Either a massive uh, weather storm, uh, you know, bad, they, they would get uh, ambushed. You know, some bad accidents would happen. Some really shitty stuff would happen to your unit for those that were unlucky enough to not know the rule and eat their charms or even just open them up or even wave them around in the wrong spot. You know, they're considered, you know, it, it's, it's very much superstition, bad luck, like wearing, you know, the right socks for a baseball player or, you know, crossing yourself if you went under a ladder or what. It, it's, it's a superstition, but it's one that's definitely always going to stick uh, if they still make the damn things, which I, I, I doubt, but I, you know, that, that was a, an urban legend. I would say urban legend is more of a superstition of uh, the frontline soldiers and Marines and whatnot over, uh, over in the Gulf the uh, last couple decades of war. Number four, walking on the grass. 
Now I'm going to talk about the old uh, sailors and dogs stay off the grass from Virginia. I covered that in the other one. We won't talk about it here. I'm just talking about walking on the grass on base in general. This is one that just has been around forever. I can tell you personally, I've looked at many, all the bases I've been on, I always looked at many of their regulation instructions. I've never actually seen an instruction for a base that says, you're not allowed to walk on grassy areas. You must stick to a sidewalk. This seems to be one of those like internally promoted uh, ideas you know, for, for, for professionalism or whatnot, but there's never actually been a rule other than, I mean, obviously, if your sergeant or your chief or whatever tells you to stay off the grass, you stay off the fucking grass, but really, like, this rule doesn't really exist on any kind of paper that I've ever seen. Maybe it's the basis of have actually written down. From what I've seen, this rule doesn't actually exist. It's kind of made up and just one of those things that just stays around and people bitch and complain about, but it may actually not, ex it may not actually exist. Number three, uh, next two would be Navy Pacifics. That's where I come from. I know these better. Uh, haunted anchor chains or haunted anchors. A lot of ships, uh, when they newer ships come out, the anchors they have aren't always brand new uh, cast casted for that ship. They're usually taken from an older ship. Uh, one I know specifically is the Forrestal's anchors went on the John C. Stennis, my old boat, and they were rumored to be haunted by the deck department that worked on them. And I've heard this about a lot of different anchors that came from a lot of different ships. It just seems to be a very popular idea. You know, this, these anchors were taken off the ship where something bad happened, and now we've put them on this ship, and, you know, you can hear the cries and screams when the anchors dropped, and weird things happen in the anchor hold, and all sorts of shit. Uh, you know, the fact that I hear it so many times from different ships, whether or not you believe in ghosties or not, you know, kind of leads me to think this is one of those fun urban legends about anchors and what, you know, old boatswain's mates tell their young deck seamen, you know, to keep them up at night when they're doing late night uh, maneuvers and shit. Number two, uh, doing, during a rehab on a ship, they found a closed up space that was built during the original uh, building of the ship that got somehow walled over and they found it when they were doing some kind of rehabilitation and a full workshop that no one knew existed is found sometimes, oftentimes it's told that there's tons of tools and everything else uh, for a working shop was found in this space. I've heard this for so many ships. You know, I mean, these shipbuilders must be so fucking incompetent. This just keeps happening over and over again. I, I don't know if this ever happened. Maybe once ever. I've heard it for so many different ships, though. I have a hard time believing it. Uh, you know, you know, your guess is as good as mine. I'm sure someone will speak up and say, that absolutely happened on my ship, USS Fuckwithall. But uh, I kind of doubt it. But it makes for a good story. And, you know, it's one of those things kind of pointing out, you know, the incompetence of shipbuilding and government contracting. And my number one urban legend for the military, Mr. Rogers, U.S. Sniper. This one has been around for probably at least the 70s. Uh, of course, uh, for the Americans know who he is. If you don't know who he is, Mr. Rogers was a legend in children's programming on public broadcast TV in the United States. A very super friendly, nice guy who hosted a kid's show, had some puppets, and telling everyone to do good stuff. And the rumor always was he was a sniper or a Navy, a uh, Marine sniper or a Navy SEAL sniper. Usually some kind of sniper with tons of confirmed kills. This super badass and originally Korean War, then it was Vietnam, and I've heard different things. The reason he wears that sweater and long sleeves is because he's covering up all his badass spec war tats. This one is absolutely not true. Uh, Mr. Rogers went through a seminary as a Presbyterian minister and pretty much went to work in TV directly afterwards. Like, he, there's no time he could have ever been serving uh, as a Marine or a Navy SEAL or whatever you, version you heard of it. it. You know, it never happened. But it's funny to juxtapose this nice, sweet uh, Presbyterian minister as some kind of badass sniper. So, you know, fun story, but absolutely not true. Definitely uh, a false on the urban legends. And that's going to do it for the top eight urban legends of the military. Did I miss any? Please let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear some from other services maybe I'm not aware of. Maybe some I forgot. Uh, like this video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Ring the stupid bell and whatever else YouTube's making us do these days. Be part of my notification squad. Woohoo! And that's all I got for now. I'll catch you freaks on the flip side. Peace!